it is Easter. And what is Easter without me making a video about Easter? It's still Easter. <laughs> Wouldn't change a thing, but let me tell you something. Let me tell you about the most consequential, wor consequential, consequential words ever spoken in human history. In history. Of all history. Even before humans. That's what it says. Uh, that's uh, Matthew chapter 27, verse 45. Now, from the sixth hour, that was midday, there was darkness over all the land. By the way, give me some context. Jesus was already crucified. He was on the cross, agonizing, waiting to die. Now, from the sixth hour, there was darkness over all the land until the ninth hour. So that was from midday until 3 p.m. And about the ninth hour, Jesus cried out with a loud voice saying, Eli, Eli, lema sabachthani, which means, or that is, my God, my God, why have you forsaken me? And some of the bystanders hearing it said, this man is calling Elijah. And one of them at once ran and took a sponge, filled it with sour wine and put it on a reed and gave it to him to drink. But the other said, wait, let us see whether Elijah will come to save him. And Jesus cried out again with a loud voice and yielded up his spirit. And behold, the curtain of the temple was torn in two from top to bottom. And the earth shook and the rocks were split. And the tombs also were opened. And many bodies of the saints who had fallen asleep were raised. And coming out of the tombs after his resurrection, they went into the holy city and appeared to many. That's pretty terrifying. <laughs> When the centurion and those, the centurion is the guy who was in the temple, and those who were with him, oh, hold on. Sorry, the centurion is, <laughs> apologies, the, the guy who was with Jesus, the leader of the uh, Roman army. When the centurion and those who were with him, keeping watch over Jesus, saw the earthquake and what took place, they were filled with awe and said, truly, this was the Son of God. Here's Jesus crucified. They thought they were crucifying a revolutionary or some some crazy or something. Different people crucified Jesus for different reasons. But the thing that is fascinating to me is the original manuscript of Matthew in the New Testament is in Greek, Koine Greek, the common Greek of the time. And here they took care, this is not the English translation doing this, this is actually written in the Greek as like this. They took care to write his Aramaic, Eli, Eli, Lema sabachthani. And then they explain which means that is, my God, my God, why have you forsaken me? That is in the Greek original, like that. This is not a, the English translator saying, well, this actually means this and that. No, 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 no. This is, as, as I just read it to you in English, it is written in the Greek uh, original. One of the, 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 just a side note, the only book in the Bible that you could argue that maybe the original was not in Greek is Matthew. But this is enough uh, evidence to say, well, if it was not written in Greek in Aramaic, there's some crazy people who think that the original of the New Testament was written in Aramaic, madness, insanity. But this by itself, if it were written in Aramaic, they wouldn't explain what the Aramaic meant because it doesn't make sense. But why did they, why did they took care to write what Jesus said in Aramaic? Because everything else, they just write, it, Jesus probably spoke Aramaic a lot. He probably also spoke Greek as well. But, this is one, I think it's the only part, maybe there's another, maybe when he said Abba, Father or something, but not many parts. But now let's go to John, because John also has a, an interesting, the same, the, the same, the crucifixion of Jesus is, is told in all the four Gospels. In John, it says something slightly different, it says this, uh, John chapter 19, verse 23. When the soldiers had crucified Jesus, they took his garments and divided them into four parts, one part for each soldier. He was already on the cross, by the way. Same, same, same period. Also his tunic. But the tunic was seamless, woven in one piece from top to bottom. So they said to one another, Let us not tear it, but cast lots for it, to see whose it shall be. This was to fulfill the scripture, which says, They divided my garments among them, and for my clothing they cast lots. So the soldier did these things. But standing by the cross of Jesus were his mother and his mother's sister, Mary, the wife of Clopas, and Mary Magdalene. When Jesus saw his mother and the disciple whom he loved standing nearby, this is John talking about himself, <laughs> he said to his mother, Woman, behold, your son. Or woman, here is your son. Then he said to the disciple, Behold, your mother. Same thing. 
here, your mother. And from that hour, the disciple took her to his home. So let's talk about himself. John, him, took her to his home to look after Jesus' mother. After this, verse 28, Jesus, knowing that all was now finished, said to fulfill the scripture, I thirst. A jar full of sour wine stood there. So they put a sponge full of the sour wine on a hyssop branch and held it to his mouth. When Jesus had received the sour wine, he said, It is finished. And he bowed his head and gave up his spirit. Just before Jesus died, he said, It is finished. And that is the most consequential words ever spoken in all of human history. Now let's go back to that passage that says, Eli, Eli, Lemax Bactani. Why did they specifically said that G, the Aramaic that Jesus spoke? And then I love how Matthew gave the account of all the people confused. Oh, why is he calling Eli? Is Elijah going to save him? Whatever. Psalm 22. Psalm 22. It starts with this. To the choir master, according to the Doe of the Dawn, a Psalm of David. That's just the explanation of what the thing is. And by the way, that is actually not the English translation as well. That is written in Hebrew, in the original. That's actually verse 1 in the Masoretic text. Verse 2 is verse 1 of the English. So if you go and read the Masoretic text, you find verse 1 on verse 2 in Hebrew. But in English it says this, My God, my God, why have you forsaken me? Why are you so far from saving me? From the words of my groaning. And... Sounds very familiar, doesn't it? The Hebrew is like this. Eli, Eli, lama gazaftani, which is what Jesus spoke. When Jesus said that, he said it because he was fulfilling the prophecy about him. In fact, his life was a fulfillment of prophecy. Jesus is the perfect fulfillment of all the law and the prophets. Everything that is in the Old Testament that we are incapable of doing. Jesus is the perfect fulfillment. Yes, Psalm 22 was written by David, and he was also talking about himself. He wrote it, uh, this is his, his sentiments, that he was feeling like that at some point in his life. But the Bible is the inspired word of God. God made him, you know, inspired David to write this not just talking about himself, but talking about Jesus as well. You see, if you keep going to Psalm 22, it's a long psalm. I'm not going to read it. You should read it in your own time. It's, it's pretty awesome. Verse 16 says this, For dogs encompass me. A company of evil doers, evil do doers encircles me. They have pierced my hands and feet. I can count all my bones. They stare and gloat over me. They divide my garments among them, and for my clothing they cast lots. See, while John didn't really write the Eli Eli Alamas Bactani, he specifically said they divided their, their garments to fulfill the prophecy, and he was quoting Psalm 22 when he wrote that. And then verse 29. We'll get to verse 29 in a moment. But when Jesus said, It is finished. It is finished. The word he uses is tetelestai, which is Greek because the New Testament is written in Greek. And it is written, it, it, this is the, the verb teleo, I think. Let me have a look. Yeah, teleo, which means to finish, to complete. And it's conjugated in the perfect tense, which means it is completed, perfect passive. That's why it's it is finished. Not it finished, but it is finished. And the perfect tense means it's done, it's completed. The action is over. Jesus said, it is finished. What is finished? It is finished. That's the most consequential thing that was ever spoken, ever. Now let's go back to Psalm 24, because this is pretty awesome. I was reading this the other day, I'm like, wow, I, wow, wow. That's why you should learn Greek and Hebrew, because you, you realize things that you don't realize otherwise. Verse 29, I'm going to read the last three verses. It says, All the prosperous of the earth eat and worship. Before him shall bow all who go down to the dust, all who die, right? Even the one who could not keep himself alive. Posterity shall serve him. It shall be told of the Lord to the coming generation. They shall come 
and proclaim his righteousness to a people yet unborn, that he has done it. The last word of Psalm 24, 22, sorry, is asa, which in Hebrew means to do, to make. And it's also conjugated in the perfect tense. And it ends with ki asa, for or that he did it. He has done it. He has done it. Psalm 24 ends just like the last word that Jesus spoke. It is finished. You know, it says here, they shall come and proclaim his righteousness to a people yet unborn. What is that? That he has done it. It's the righteousness, not our righteousness, not your righteousness, not the righteousness of fulfilling the law, but the righteousness that he has done it. It is the righteousness that Jesus himself did it by dying on a cross in my place, in your place, if you put your trust in him. Don't be misled. If you don't put your trust in Jesus, he didn't die for you. But if you do, he did die for you. He knew who was going to believe in him. And he only died for those who believe in him. And for those, he died in their place for their sin, for all the things they did and they would do that are wrong. Jesus is the only one who is righteous. He died, but he didn't stay dead. God rose him. God the Father rose him from the dead to, to, as a sign that what he did, he did actually mean what he said. It is finished. He did it. He did all the righteousness for those who believe in him so we can be grafted into the family of God. He did it. Jesus, God rose him, the Father rose Jesus from the dead as a sign to say, yes, he's victorious. He won. He finished. It is finished. This is the righteousness that we can stand on. This is the righteousness that we proclaim to people yet on board, to the generations yet to come. That is the righteousness that Jesus conquered on the cross. That's why the most consequential words that Jesus, that, that were ever spoken in all of history is, it is finished. Because apart from Jesus conquering death and conquering sin on the cross, there's no hope for us. There's no hope for salvation. No one can achieve salvation by themselves. I want to read a passage from Revelation, and I'm going to cut the video here because I didn't prepare for that, but I really want to read it. Revelation chapter 5, and I'm going to finish with this. Then I saw, this is John having a vision. The whole book of Revelation is him having a vision of things yet to come, confusing things, things that people spend a lot of time discussing and trying to interpret. But some things are very clear and they are not confusing, and this is one of them. Then I saw in the right hand of him who was seated on the throne a scroll written within and on the back, sealed with seven seals. And I saw a mighty angel proclaiming with a loud voice, Who is worthy to open the scroll and break its seals? And no one in heaven or on earth or under the earth was able to open the scroll or to look into it. And I, John, began to weep loudly because no one was found worthy to open the scroll or to look into it. And one of the elders said to me, Weep no more. Behold, or look, the lion of the tribe of Judah, the root, the root of David, has conquered, so that he can open the scroll and its seven seals. And between the throne and the four living creatures and among the elders I saw a lamb standing as though he had been slain, with seven horns and with seven eyes, which are the seven spirits of God sent out into all the earth. And he went and took the scroll from the right hand of him who was seated on the throne. And when he had taken the scroll, the four living creatures and the twenty-four elders fell down before the Lamb, each holding a harp and golden bowls of full of incense, which are the prayers of the saints. And they sang a new song, saying, Worthy are you to take the scroll and to open its seals, for you were slain. And by your blood, you ransom people for God from every tribe and every language and people and nation. And you have made them a kingdom 
and priests to our God, and they shall reign on the earth. Then I looked, and I heard around the throne, and the living creatures, and the elders, the voice of many angels, numbering myriads of myriads and thousands of thousands, saying with a loud voice, Worthy is the Lamb who was slain, to receive power, and wealth, and wisdom, and might, and honor, and glory, and blessing. And I heard every creature in heaven and on earth and under the earth and in the sea and all that is in them saying to him who sits on the throne and to the Lamb be blessing and honor and glory and might forever and ever. And the four and the four living creatures said, Amen. And the elders fell down in worship. Amen.